From late September to early October, tens of thousands of people flock to Wellington for the annual World of Rebel Art Show. WOW, as it's otherwise known, is a theatrical extravaganza that showcases rebel art designs from New Zealand and around the world. The two-hour show features stunning sets, sound, lighting, dance and circus acts interspersed with fashion and art. This year there are 166 garments on display from designers all over the globe, including the US. The embassy had the pleasure of interviewing 10 of the American designers in the digital studio this week. This year I'm in the open section. My garment is Cleopatra's Dance and it is a bodysuit made all of mosaics, which is fine china and glass tiles. It was, it was an undertaking because the bodysuit is form-fitting and it has sleeves and a neck. It's, it's um, probably over 200 plates, china plates. You know, it, it was, I did it in stages. I cut up all my china first and then I actually sewed. I made the bodysuit because it had to zip on because once the mosaic is on the, on the garment, it hardens and so it isn't very pliable. So yes, it took forever. <laughs> it was very, very big undertaking. I always look forward to the whole production, the whole event, because it's like unbelievable with the set design and the music and the choreographing. And then when your your outfit comes out, it's just it's just beyond belief. It's it's pretty fabulous. Probably would try to do something that was a canvas, that was a painting on a canvas. Because I have always done hard, hard things like seashells and ceramics and things that are very hard. I think I would attempt to translate a garment that's more like a painting, an oil painting. But I wouldn't want it to read that way. Even when I designed things in the past, like last year's was a, a seashell dress. It was all made of um, shell flowers. And it was actually a ball gown, but from a distance you didn't realize that it was over 5,000 shell flowers. Yeah. <laughs> so I like things to be a little bit of a surprise. About seven years ago, I uh, uh, went to a wearable art show in Dunedin, Florida. And, uh, and I, it's Dunedin Fine Art Center. And I thought that would be great if I could uh, design a wearable art. And I thought about it for about seven years, and early one morning, I was, when I was still in bed, I, uh, I thought about the spiral ribbon. That would be a great uh, uh, piece of sculpture, and it would be uh, art form. And I could just wrap a piece of metal around the girl, and uh, I'd have it. And uh, it worked, so <laughs> I have three outfits. And uh, they're the very first three outfits I designed. They're uh, metal, aluminum. I think you say that different here. <laughs> My socket outfit, a bow, and it was uh, difficult. And uh, I had scheduled a photographer to take pictures. And the day before, I didn't have a bow, and I didn't have, I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I went out to the hardware store and bought some more sheet metal, and I. Uh, uh, built that bow that day, finished up late that night, and the next morning we took the picture. Oh, all the beautiful designs, it's, it's fantastic, it's a beautiful show, and I was very excited about it. I'm excited to be here. Oh, I like metal. I, I, the the shit aluminum, and uh, I have designed some of uh, uh, stainless steel, and uh, I mirrored stainless steel, and it reflect light, and uh, and I, I like that. And I, I just, I don't have a desire design with any other material other than metal. And it has, it has to be hand formed because um, you, you, uh, if you try to bend it with using tools, you put a crimp in it, yeah. and then it's, it's no good. So you have to hand form it. It's difficult. My garment is. Um, like a flapper style 20s type dress. Uh, it's made out of uh, zebra wood veneer completely. Um, it um, consists of a, a little flapper style hat, a bodice, uh, a skirt with multi pieces of veneer and a pair of shoes. It took a very long time. Um, I, this is more of a hobby for me. 
Um, so I constructed mainly uh, on weekends, after work, at lunch. Um, so I kind of fit it in between. It's really hard to calculate the exact amount of time, but uh, months. Well, you always look forward to the show. Um, but it, uh, another part of this, I've been here so many times that um, I have a real good group of friends uh, here now, other designers, and I always uh, look forward to getting together with them again and actually meeting uh, new designers. And Well, uh, I already kind of do that. Um, I use wood. I'm a carpenter. It's kind of what... Um, my medium is, uh, so it would be wood. Um. This year, um, I base it off of the idea uh, to, to not conform to what you think you might want to, or think you should be, but to be yourself, really. So they start off with um, a black and white um, constricting outfit that then they open up into um, all kinds of color ranges and they dance around freely. So be yourself. <laughs> I just look forward to seeing um, all the different things that people are doing all around the world as well, designers and getting to meet other people and um, it working kind of in the same um, form, I guess. And, um, yeah, the, the show it will be really fun to watch. So. I like working with organic materials, um, but I, I really just like to experiment with all kinds of things. So um, I guess more I would just be interested in learning different techniques of things that I don't have access to, like um, uh, laser cutting and um, yeah, just all those really interesting design things that I'm learning all about now. So. <laughs> uh, our garment is called Claws for Thorns. It's um, uh, kind of a central uh, Chinese empress figure and she's surrounded by two um, Chinese lion guards that kind of dance around her and they have spears and they have big cartoonish heads. And... And it was sort of inspired by, uh, we have a Chinatown in Philadelphia, so we were sort of walking through and trying to experience some of the architecture and be inspired by that. So those two uh, lions show up a lot <laughs> around town. So that was some of the main inspiration for us for that piece. Yes, <laughs> it felt like it took a very long time. Um, but we could have probably used another three months to really get it to where we wanted it to be. But it was two or three months of really intense labor. Uh, I think I look forward to seeing what uh, is going to make me get really uh, crazy about what I'm going to make next year. Like what's going to inspire me to be like, oh man, that just opened up my brain into whole new avenues of things I could make. So yeah, I think that's it, just like looking for more inspiration. I've sort of come into making costumes um, by starting off as a performer and making costumes for myself. So I do love collaborating with performers and um, WOW has some really top-notch performers. So it's really, really amazing to um, send it off. You can't really do much about it. And when you see it on stage, you see the performers really bring it to life. And there's that's that magical moment that you sort of work towards without so that and they don't let you down ever, I don't think. <laughs> I've always wanted to get into uh, molding, like molding uh, plastic shapes or metal, uh, like cast cast metal pieces. Uh, I've always kind of worked around that neighborhood and I've had to dive into that. Um, we've been really fortunate to be going to different places in Wellington and a lot of people have been talking about sort of the 3D rendering, modeling, um, so it would be really um, cool to learn some of that technology and work with some of those materials. My piece is a really whimsical piece. Um, it's a cuckoo clock bra um, that's inspired by traditional Bavarian culture. Um, we have a Chris Kindle market, which is a traditional German market in um, Chicago in around Christmas time every year. And my favorite stand is the cuckoo clock stand. And it has these beautiful handmade traditional cuckoo clocks. And um, I'm always thinking about wow and what I would enter and what sort of piece I would make. And when I saw this stand, I just knew I had to make a cuckoo clock bra. It had to happen. <laughs> so um, it's, you know, it has mechanical elements and birds that pop out when you pull on the, uh, the um, 
pine cone chains and it has, you know, hand, uh, hand embroidered lederhosen shorts and all the whole nine yards. <laughs> it did, it took tons of time. Um, I would say it was about four solid months of work. Um, I am in grad school, so I'm in school all day from nine to five or nine to nine. And then I would go home every night and it was, the like depth of the winter in Chicago it was like five degrees Fahrenheit, which is very cold. And I would spend another six hours in my room just like working tirelessly on constructing this, or I would be hand embroidering on the train during rush hour. And so it was just kind of like a constant, where can I fit in an extra minute to work on it, yeah. I look forward to getting to come to New Zealand. Uh, it's a really amazing excuse to uh, get to travel uh, and see new things. Um, but the show itself, just seeing the show is amazing. I do tons of other shows um, where you have to be the one backstage, finding the model and the guard, you know, putting it all together and running like crazy. And there's something so phenomenal about coming to WOW where you've sent it off, you've let it go out into the world, and you just get to show up and see this mind-blowing show and enjoy it and so that's really it's like a vacation in a way to get to come see your your garment set in such a fantastic environment that's a really difficult question in some ways because I get so excited by all non-traditional materials I'm really looking in daily life at how I can use something in a different way um, right now I'm really excited by bicycle tubes um, and you know try, really trying to push it beyond um, just even sewing it but re reconnecting configuring it and reimagining it into some new way. So that's at the minute, but it's always changing. That piece is inspired by a Japanese koi pond, and it has a very long oversized uh, blue kimono with two fishes that swim around, so a big red fish on the front and an orange fish on the back. The kimono is uh, silk, a silk chiffon on the top, and the fish, the base body, is made from a thermoplastic fabric that I shaped on a mold and um, then steamed it into, into its shape. <laughs> a, a lot of time I worked, um, probably three months of pretty intense work. Besides seeing the amazing show and getting to see my piece be a part of it, I think I look forward most to the community. Um, this is my third time coming to New Zealand and so there are actually faces here that I've seen both the other times I was yeah. here and it's nice to get to talk to them and catch up and see the new work that they're doing and uh, talk about new techniques and ideas and then also getting to meet um, the new people I haven't met before. Some material I've been thinking about for a number of years and I'm just waiting to get the right inspiration and design to use is uh, office supply material. <laughs> so paper clips and binder clips and all of those little metal plastic yeah. objects. So I think some someday I'll do yeah. it. I did a Google image search looking up something else yeah. and I saw an image of the Supreme WOW Award winner from years back and, and that's kind of how it started, just an accident, just stumbling upon online. This year I'm entering in three categories, the children's section, the open section, and the bizarre bra section. In the children's section I have a garment that is red called Ruby Raindrop. We had to restrict ourselves to one color. I have a, a garment called Krakena in the open section. It's kind of like the female version of the Kraken. And then in the bizarre bra section I have a bra called Look But Don't Touch and it's inspired by a porcupine. It, I knew it was going to take a long time to construct. It uses a lot of gem drops that I, I didn't buy, I made. You have to mix up a two-part resin and it's clear you tint it with just a little bit of red for each drop. And I don't have an evacuator so I have to pour them very carefully to prevent, uh, to minimize the bubbles. And each drop takes about five days to be fully cured. If you touch it too soon, you might leave sticky fingerprints. It's made of uh, foam structure, uh, stretch crushed velvet, red fabric, airbrush shading paint, and lots of beads, hundreds and hundreds of beads. I've spent an entire month beading. So all of March was just beading at yeah. nighttime, bead, 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 bead. It is almost a tie between the porcupine bra, because of the funny title, yeah. <laughs> and, and the ruby raindrop. But I like the ruby raindrop, I think. 
more because the the young girl Anna back in America that I built it on, she has worn previous things for me, and so she and her mom um, have been uh, models for me in America for some of my previous mob projects. So to me, they're good luck. So maybe they'll bring me good luck this year. But what I look forward to every time I come to Wow is even before the show starts, I like catching up with what I call Wow alumni. It's kind of like our Wow reunion, uh, just about life and and past WoW projects and current WoW projects and current things in the future. I like the new people that allows me to meet. Before I ever come to WoW, I didn't have that too many international friends. And WoW kind of was the catalyst for me to join social media because I knew there was no other way to keep in touch with them. Otherwise, every year I'd come back, everyone would seem like strangers. And I would I like to say, I also like to see how every year WoW tops its previous years as far as the show excitement, and they managed to do it. Every, it's like they, they're never gonna run out of ideas. Yeah. It's so much fun. Well, for about seven or eight years, I've pondered this, and I, I might do it, but I've always thought about using rubber bands. Mm -hmm. And the reason I wanna choose rubber bands is because I have a cousin, a much younger cousin, that him and his buddies were going to try to do a world record for the world's longest rubber band chain. So they had so many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of rubber bands and they never finished it. So I asked my cousin, I said, hey, can I have permission to someday do something with rubber bands? And he said, sure. So it, it would be rubber bands. This year I've entered Gothic Habit in the uh, open section. It's, well, it's made out of laser cut felt, which was a fascinating item to work with. I'd never worked with it before. And as far as how long, I only allow myself the first quarter of the year because I have other things to do throughout the rest of the year. So Christmas Day comes around and it's my opportunity to start on my WOW outfit. And then it's due by April 1st. <laughs> I used to look forward to seeing the outfit on stage, and although I still look forward to that, I think it's the sense of community we now have. I've made some wonderful friends, and it's so lovely to visit with both American designers as well as designers from New Zealand and Australia, and just talk shop. And we all joke that we're addicted to this show, and so we have our little support group that we get together and chat. It's so difficult to choose materials because I think from my own standpoint, I've worked in metal, I've worked in plastics, I've worked in fiber, and it all depends what gets stuck in my head at any point in time. Now, this year it was felt, right now I have a bit of an obsession with acrylic plastic, so maybe that's where I'm heading. Uh, there's quite a few similarities between Wellington and San Francisco. I think partly, obviously, with being surrounded with water and harbors. And also, both of us are influenced by weather a great deal. Uh, we, we both get wind. Uh, I think we get the added benefit of fog. And I think that does influence how people uh, carry themselves throughout the day. And you, you, you learn to, no matter what's happening, if it's windy or if it's sunny, you appreciate the beautiful city you're living in. I think San Francisco is, does have somewhat the vibrancy, but I love coming to Wellington because it, it, I think because it's slightly smaller, you do get the wonderful sense of art around the harbor and the sense of you know, coffee shops and people are out and about. So they, they do share some of the similarities. I think both can learn from each other, but I, I'm hoping that San Francisco can gain some of the insights of how uh, the arts have been supported in, uh, in New Zealand as well as in Wellington. San Francisco has begun, begun to have more outdoor art and trying to support the artists and I think if we can push that a little further we can truly have creative energy between the two cities being quite similar. I think my art is influenced in everything I do, uh, whether it's where I've traveled or where I am and it depends on the year, it depends on my mindset and sometimes I'm influenced flying over New Zealand seeing how green it is here right now when in San Francisco we were in the middle of a drought so I think part of those might influence future pieces. I love Wellington, <laughs> so I love San Francisco too and I've been in San Francisco for 21 years now but I love coming here every year and touring around. It would be fabulous to come back and maybe spend a little extra time next time.